Hi, Kubrick Lover 1972 here. Also known as Brian. Probably know that by now. Anyways, as it says, Barnes & Noble Blu-ray pickups and one Barnes & Noble, well, hey, well, 10 Barnes & Noble Blu-rays. Uh, yes, and one, one, well, technically it's 11. It's 10 Criterion Blu-rays, one Criterion DVD, and then... Um, one other Blu-ray, which you'll find out, which I'll show at the very end. So let's get to it. Um, the first nine that you will see, I bought on Black Friday at South Burlington, Vermont's uh, Barnes and & Noble. And, and I went in there, and there basically was nobody there. Well, there's a person I talked to who was looking at Criterions, and and there's a few people walking around the AV area, but not too many. They weren't really looking at Criterions, so... You know, there's all these criterions there, and I was go only going to buy five, but then I saw a few titles that caught my eye. And then there was one title that I couldn't remember what it was, and I thought I had written them all down on my phone, so when I got to the store, I know what the titles to buy, and I couldn't figure it, figure it out. It turns out I believe it didn't come out until after Thanksgiving, so there's that. So, you know, I it's a 50% off sale and what i liked about going into the store is that um i'm a barnes and noble member and i get 10 percent off anything i buy so in addition to the 50 50 percent off i get another 10 percent um my cousin is saying to me like it doesn't exactly it's not exactly 60 percent off I, I i can talk to a friend of mine who's good with math i think i think he understands how this works like Either either way, if you take the 50% off first or you take the 10% off first, you're not really getting 60% off. You're getting more like 57% off. If you know what that means exactly, just put it down there because I'm not good at math. Um, yeah, so I bought these Criterions. Um, I, I, I spent a little money. You know, I, I did really dive in a little bit but i'm glad i got them and i bought a calendar too i'm not going to show the calendar the calendar is hanging on my on my uh, uh refrigerator we you know what after after the blu-rays and d and, and dvd maybe i'll show the the calendar I'll, I'll stop the recording for a second i'll get it and i'll show it to you yeah i'll do that well let, let's get to this because my hard drive is going to get fuller the more i talk so this is a Japanese film. It's a Mizuguchi movie. It's a story from Shikamatsu. I don't really know anything. Oops. I don't really know anything about this movie. But it's Mizuguchi. That's why I bought it. Um, I just got an interview with actor Kyoko Kagawa. Mizuguchi, the author behind the Matura Unseen. At New Illustrated Audio Essay by Film Scholar Dudley Andrew. Uh, and an essay by Film Scholar Hayden Guest. So, it's got, uh, I, I haven't really looked at this. Oh, another thing about this is, I'm not going to watch any of these, I'm not going to watch any of these Blu-rays or DVD until I've paid the credit card pay payment on this. Um, because I just want I just want to feel like you know I own them and how I feel like I own them is well you know it's sort of like borrowed money credit card and I do pay it off you know monthly so I don't have any interest on either of my credit cards and I did it on the did it on the other one that I used to have as well so. Oh, we got it wrong way. So that's a story from Chikamatsu. Then we got a film I have seen, and I have some of his other movies. The French director Robert Brosson. It's it's called Ah Hazard Balthazar. It's about a donkey that's like a metaphor for Christ, and he goes in the ownership of more than one owner, and he's sort of treated badly. Um, 
interview from 2004 with film scholar Donald Ritchie. Donald Ritchie has done a lot of stuff with the Japanese cinema, like covering Kurosawa. Interview, oh, oh I read that. Uh, a Motor in Order, Brisson, I'm, I'm but butchering that, I'm sure, a 1966 French television program about the film featuring director Robert Brisson, filmmakers Jean-Luc Godard and Louis Mal, and members of all how Hazard, Basal Hazard's cast and crew, trailer, and an essay by film scholar James Quant. And I recall liking this film, hence buy, buying it. I like this artwork. And uh, so did I show this? I, I can't remember if I showed show this. This is another one of their pamphlets. The other side is just blood, just text. I'm all right, six minutes. Okay, next one is another French direction, fr French director, Alain René, Hiroshima, Monomore. I have seen this film, but not for a long time. It's got audio commentary by film historian Peter Cowie. It's got interviews with director Alain René from 1961 to 1980, interviews with actor Emmanuel Riva from 1959 to 2003, New interview with film scholar Francois Thomas, author of La Terre de Lon, René. New interview with music scholar Tim Page about the film score. Revar Hiroshima, a 2013 program about the film's restoration. And a booklet featuring an essay by critic Kent Jones and an excerpt from a 1959 Cahade de Cinema roundtable discussion about the film. So I, I probably bought this because it's, um, it, as people know, if they've watched my channel, and I'm into Japan, and um, I can't recall, I, I think there's some erotic scenes in this. I, I can't remember it too well. This is just text I'm leafing through. Here's another picture. Um... When Jonathan Demme was alive, I used to attend his rarely seen cinemas. And he showed, I think, at least three Rene films. I wasn't wild about, well, at least two of them, I think. They were like, he showed some good movies that I enjoyed. And um, the idea behind the, sh behind the showings was to show movies to people that maybe didn't show, weren't on the radar, or, or, yeah, just didn't get enough press and were pretty interesting movies. But the Renee films were kind of blah to me. But I, I think I enjoyed liking this. I do like Last Year at Marindad. I like that. I don't have it, but I like it. This one's by Scorsese. I, this wasn't on my list, but Scorsese, I saw it there. I had to get it, so I got it. Age of Innocence. With Daniel Day Lewis, Michelle Pfeiffer, and Winona Ryder. It's got uh, new interviews with, with Scorsese, co screenwriter Jay Cox, who, who worked on Gangs in New York with him, production designer Dante Freddy, he also did Gangs in New York, and costume designer Gabriella Pisucci, I'm probably butchering that. Innocence and Experience, a 1993 documentary on the making of the film, the trailer, and an essay by film critic Jeffrey O'Brien. I recall liking this movie. I saw it in the theater uh, back when it came out, the late 80s or early 90s. You know, it's like the Victorian time period where people suppressed their feelings and followed manners and, and uh, man they followed like um, what do you call it um, 
formalities, you know, but it wasn't very natural, a natural way to be, um, to act. It wasn't, you know, arranged marriages and I can't remember the plot of this film, but I recall liking it. It's Scorsese. Almost all the time when you see a Scorsese film, you're going to be pleased, I think. It's based on a book. I think the book was written by Edith Warden. Yes, Edith Warden. I'm sort of, I'm sort of speeding through this because I... Well, I have a fair amount to show you. Color of Pomegranates by Sergei Par Parjanovov. It's an Armenian, Azerbaijani, and Georgian. Um, new audio commentary featuring critic, filmmakers, and festival programmer Tony Raines. The Color of Armenian Land, a rarely seen 1969 documentary by Mikhail Vartanov, featuring footage of director. Sergei Paredinov Par at work, new video essay on the film Symbols and References featuring scholar James Stefan, new interview with Stefan on the production of the film, documentary since 1977 and 2003 on Armenian poet Sayat Nova and Par Parjanovov, I'm, I'm butchering that, last film, a 2015 experimental short documentary by Martios M. Vardanov and an essay by film scholar Ian Christie. Some of the backs of the, these criterions, they don't really have, you know, um, the, you know, the back part of the Blu-ray or, or DVD doesn't have like any really artwork, it just has text on it. So I, I, I'm sorry if I sound a little rushed, it's just, I'm afraid I'm going to run out of hard drive space. And that probably there'll be a warning when that does come up. Maybe I'll have to split this in two for all I know. This is a Cuban movie. I'm pretty sure it's Cuban. It's in Spanish. I'm pretty sure it's a Cuban movie. Yeah, Cuban cinema. It's Memories of Underdevelopment. I, I, don't, I really have no idea what this film's about, but it sounded interesting. New interviews with film critics B. Ruby Rich and Jose Antonio Evora. New interview with novelist and screenwriter Edmondo Desnos. Teton from Havana to Guatemala, Guatemala, a 2008 feature length documentary on director Tomas Guterres Alea's life and career. Segment from a 1989 audio interview, interview with Guterres Alea. Segments from 2017 interviews with da actor Daisy Gr Granados and editor Nelson Rodriguez from the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts, and Sciences. Visual History Program Collection, trailer, and an essay by author Joshua Jelly Shapiro. So, I don't know if this movie was suppressed in Cuba. Um... You can see that. Um, I'm, here we go. I think that's one of the reasons why I decided to buy it because, oh, this is a poster. I, I, haven't, I haven't opened all these things, or sometimes when I, you know, buy a Blu ray or DVD, I, I watch. I watch the um, just text inside here. Um, I watch like maybe eight, five or ten minutes of the starting before I watch it completely. Uh, you know, another, another point in time. So when I watch these films, I'll probably give a review, and then you can find more out, more out what 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 they are like, what they're about, and all that. This I I was. Really like, really wanted again, and I got it. Tree of Life by um, Terrence Malick, you know another great Terrence Malick film. Terrence Malick makes fantastic movies, very poetic, um, visually stunning films.
Um, new extended version of the film featuring an additional 50 minutes of footage. footage. So I think there's two versions, a theatrical and extended version. Exploring the Tree of Life, a 2011 documentary featuring collabor co collaborators and admirers of Malick's, including filmmakers. Oh, David Fincher, I like him. And Christopher Nolan, he's good too. New interviews with actor Jessica Chastain and senior visual effects supervisor Dan Glass. New video essay by critic Benjamin B. about the film's cinematography and style. Featuring audio interviews with Lubezki. He's great. Emmanuel Lubezki, great cinematographer. Production designer Jack Fisk. He's great. And other crew members. New interview with critic Alex Ross about Malik's use of classical music. Video essay from 2011 by critic Matt Stoller Zeltz and editor Serena Bramble. Trailer and an essay by critic. Kent Jones in a 2011 piece on the film by critic Roger Ebert. So, Terrence Malick is worth it. He's just, um, this is just a beautiful job they did with this. So I'm excited to have another look at this movie. You can see that. Oh, the glare there. Right there. And then the Blu rays themselves. Yeah. So. That's Tree of Life. Oh, and, and the booklet. Nice booklet that comes with it. Jessica Chastain there. Man, I, I thought this this video would be short, like 10 minutes, and I'm already 17 minutes. Brad Pitt. And the boys, the young boys that are in the film, they're fantastic too, acting alongside Jessica Chastain and uh, Brad Pitt. I don't know if this is like, it's set in Texas, I believe, and Terrence Malick, I believe, is from Texas, and maybe this is a semi-accurate reflection of who he was, his life when he was a kid, maybe. I think it's like the 1960s when this uh, part of this film is set. There's a dinosaur. That's part of the artistry of the film. Okay, so, so let me... 18 minutes. Okay, so this is the Palma Sisters, Brian De Palma Sisters. I've seen this a few times. I saw it at the Jacob Byrne Film Center this past Halloween because it was um, um, oh, just a horror movie that they showed. It's the first thing. It was great restoration. I think they had a restored print. I saw it on DVD from the library where I, where I live, and uh, I thought of buying it for a while, and then I finally bought it. But this comes with more stuff on it. You know, new interview with actor... Jennifer Salt, interviews from 2004 with De Palma actors Bill Finley and Charles Durning, editor Paul Hirsch, who I think edited Taxi Driver, but I'm not sure. And producer Edward R. Pressman, audio from a 1973 discussion with De Palma at the American Film Institute, appearance from 1970 by actor Margot Kidder on The Dick Cavett Show. I watched that. It was pretty interesting. Photo gallery and radio spots and an essay by critic Kerry Reiki. Excerpts from a 1973 interview with De Palma on the making of the film. And a 1973 article by the director on working with composer Bernard Herrmann. And um, 
the Palma is great at um, doing homage. He, he does homages so well. I think, uh, what's his name? Tarantino. Tarantino has made a few good, well, he's made some good films, but he's made some films I don't like that much. And um, I think it's sort of cringeworthy, uh, somewhat, some of his homages. It, it feels like he's not too original in a way, Tarantino. Because um, if you, you know, I mean, like I like Kill Bill Volume 1, but, you know, they have... Uh, Lady Snowblood, and that's even more interesting, I think, as a movie. Not that I don't like Kill Bill. I do. I've watched it a few times. I don't know, but I think this, he, he really does it much better. And the Moog synthesizer there that was used in Clockwork Orange and Barry Lynn, um, The Shining, I mean. And uh, almost done, hopefully. It, it, it just says sisters on it. There's no artwork. Okay. Last thing I picked up at the Barnes & Noble there in Vermont was this. Rolling Stones Gimme Shelter. It's got... Uh, Never before seen performance of the Stones at Madison Square Garden in 69, including Little Queenie, O'Carroll, and Prodigal Son, plus backstage outtakes. Audio commentary by directors Albert Mazels and Charlotte Zwern and collaborator Stanley Goldstein. Excerpts from KSA1 uh, and, and rather radio, radio's Altamont wrap-up. Recorded December 7, 69, with introduction by then-DJ Stefan Parponek. Ultimate Stills Gallery featuring the work of renowned photographers Bill Owens and Beth Sunflower. The Rolling Stones Altamont and Give Me Shelter, a 44-page booklet with essays by Jagger's former assistant Georgia, Georgia Bergman, music writers Michael Leiden and Stanley Booth, ex-Oakland Hells Angel chapter head Sonny Barger and film critics Amy Taubin and Godfrey Cheshire. Dig original and re-released theatrical trailers plus trailers for Maisel's films classic Grey Gardens and Salesman. I hear Salesman's good. I've seen Grey Garden. Uh, filmographies for Maisel's films and Charlotte Zwern restoration demonstration. So, and I like the Stones a lot, so that's why I bought this. I've seen this film before, but I haven't seen it in a long time, I don't think. Of course, this is the time period when the Stones are in a, in a, a change because you have... Um, Brian Jones, one of the original members, I think he coined the phrase Rolling Stones, words rather. Um, he came up with the words Rolling Stones. He died, he, he drowned in a swimming pool from drug overdose. And they got Mick Taylor, who's a really good guitarist. Um, that's the period, I think, when the Stones were at their greatest, you know, late 60s, early 70s. I love the Stones. I've watched. I, I have almost all their albums, and um, you know I like their later stuff, their earlier stuff. Um, but they, they really were at their peak at this time period. You know, this, like a little before this, during this time period, and after. So. I hope I'm. Not affecting my hard drive, but I'm already right, 24 minutes. Okay, so that does that. Last criterion I got in the mail today. That's a DVD, the Rolling Stones one. This is a Blu-ray, Magnificent Ambersons by Orson Welles' second film. Um... Two audio commentaries featuring scholars 
Robert L. Carringer and James Nearmore and critic Jonathan Rosenbaum. New interviews with film historian Simon Callow and Joseph McBride. New video essays by scholars Francois Thomas and Christopher Husted. Director Orson Welles on The Dick Cavett Show in 1970. Segment from a 1925 silent adaptation of The Magnificent Ambersons. Audio from a 1978 AFI symposium on Welles and audio interviews with Welles. Conducted by filmmaker Peter Bogdanovich. Two Mercury Theater radio plays. 17, 1938, an adaptation of another book, Booth Tarkington novel by Wells, and The Magnificent Ambersons, 1939. Trailer plus essays by authors and critics Miley Haskell, Luke Sant, Jeffrey O'Brien, Farron Smith Name, Jonathan Lemon, and excerpts from a finished, unfinished 1982 memoir by Wells. So, this I got today, this text, it's got, I have seen this film, I had it, I have, I think I still have it on VHS, I recorded it off of public television, but at the time I, we, when I was living with my mother, we, we didn't have cable, and, um, you know, the static on PBS, so you couldn't really see much. But I, I vaguely recall seeing it. I know this is supposed to not, not be that great a movie. See, it sort of pattern like a screenplay. They, they put so much dedicated effort in these criterions. Um, but there's essays in here and whatnot. Um, but uh, what was I saying? Oh, yes. So, you know, because of the fact that the Citizen Kane making Hearst look bad, when uh, Orson Welles finished making Ambersons and he went to the Amazon, I believe, for some reason, I think it was Amazon, Robert Wise, who was the editor on Sound and Music, re-edited Magnificent Ambersons according to what the studio wanted, and there was a falling out between the two of them, I believe, and that's... I think Wise talked about. I think Wise is dead now, Robert Wise. I think he. I think he said that's what led to a falling out between him and Wells. And last off, but not least, <clears throat> but not least, Incredibles two. I have not seen this. I have the first one. I I love the first one, and I'm sure the DVD wouldn't have covered all this stuff with special special features. I I don't know if I should get in special features. I think it's, I think I've, when I do a review, I'll talk about the special features of this. I'm at 28 minutes. Hang on, I'm going to show my, my calendar and that will be it. So here's my Japanese woodblock prints. I've had woodblock Japanese calendars before. I'm going to leaf through this fairly fast. Got, I'm hanging this up on my refrigerator. Not Fuji, I believe it's not Fuji, should be. Um, Hokusai, I think it's Ho or so Hokusai maybe, did um, like a series of paintings where you see Mount Fuji in the background. I think it's, is it Hokus? Yeah, Hokusai. Four more months to go. Okay, so that does it. Uh, it says on my channel that there's going to be a stream, and I'm going to be doing a stream. Um, I might delay it. I set it for 7 o'clock because I was going to go, come on. Just It's 7.13 right now. I was, I was going to be on it about five, two minutes from now, 7.15. I'm going to load this up first. Uh, once it's loaded, I'll probably go on the stream. So... It could be something like hmm, 7.35, 7.45, somewhere in there, maybe 7.50. Uh, um, 
but it is coming probably. Um, yeah, so I don't want to keep gobbling up more space on the hard drive. Um, so I'll be continuing my, my series of other favorite films and uh, honorable mentions. All right, that's I got to get off. So um, see you in the near future. Bye.